of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Welcome to Kids Corner. I'm so glad you joined us today. Our story is found in Genesis chapter 24, and it's a great love story of the Bible. It's about a young man who trusted God to give him just the right wife. We're going to see if he loved that wife that God gave him. Oh, you stay tuned. It is so exciting. But first, Eddie has something he wants to say to you. Hello, Eddie. How are you today? Well, I'm not doing very well. I'm just thinking, you know, everybody else seems to know what to do. But not Eddie. No, nah, not me. I um, just can't make up my mind on so many things. And I'm thinking, should I do this? Should I do that? What should Eddie do? What is the best? What is the right? I just don't have a clue sometimes. Well, Eddie, I'm so glad you came today because we're going to learn what a person should do and how they should live their life and how they should make decisions. Why, I'm so glad you're here. Well, I'm glad I'm here too. You know, I always learn so much and I need to know how to make the right decisions, how to live my life. Oh, I'm glad I came. I'm glad you're here too. All right, hey, I gotta go. I can't wait to hear the story. I love you all. Okay, bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Do you know that God has given you something that is very valuable and very precious? Now, if you had something of great value, what would you do with it? Well, you would, first of all, cherish it. That means you would love it. And you would guard it. And you would protect it. And God says, that's what I want you to do with the gift that I have given you. Well, what is it? Do you know what God has given you? And he's only given you one? And that is, it is your life. But he has given you a life, and you have a choice on what you do with it. Now, we can either live our life for ourselves. Do you know that uh, the basic definition of sin is all we like sheep have gone astray? We have turned to our own way, and that's how most people live their life. I want to do what I want to do. I get up in the morning. What's going to make me happy today? What do I want to do to please myself? But there's only one problem. If you live your life like that, you don't know what you're created and made to become. You don't know, as Eddie, what decisions to make. You don't know what your life is going to hold in store, what skills you need to develop, what things you need to learn to do. Do you know that instead of living your life for yourself, you can make another choice, and that is the wise choice. And that is you can say, I am going to live my life for God. You see, God has given you this gift of your life. And what he wants is he wants you to take that life and give it back to him. But he gives you a choice on whether you do that or not. And that is what our verse today says. It says, you take your life and you commit your life to the Lord. You give it back to him. And after you've committed your life to the Lord, because he knows what's best for you, he's going to take and give you that which is going to give you the greatest satisfaction and the greatest fulfillment. And you're going to accomplish things that are so worthwhile. You're going to have so much joy inside and peace. Oh, that doesn't mean that everything's going to be easy. No, 
you have satisfaction and peace in spite of the difficulties. If you live your life for yourself, you're going to have difficulties. If you live your life for God, you're going to have difficulties. But if you live your life for God, then God is going to allow you to accomplish the great things that he has created and made you to do. But when you commit your way, the way you should go, your life, to the Lord, then you need to trust in Him. Don't say, oh, I, you know, I, I, I'm afraid. Maybe He's not going to do what I want to do. Maybe it's going to be something that I don't want. No, trust Him. He's going to live you, lead you in the right way. And it says, and He shall bring it to pass. That which he, which he has created and made you to become, you are going to become. Oh, it is so wonderful. So if you commit your way to God, what does that mean? Well, you're doing the right thing right now. Because first of all, if you do what God wants you to do, first of all, he's given you many instructions in his word. It's kind of like the user's manual. He made you, here, here's how a human being that I have made should live. So you would want to know as much as you can about God's word. And you know, of course, the first thing that everybody must do is put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the very first way that you commit your way to him. But after you've put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, then God says, I have given you a helper. I have given you my very Holy Spirit that will live inside of you and guide you in every way that you should go. So every morning when you wake up, you need to say, Lord, what do you want me to do today? Not what do I want to do to have fun. And of course, if you've committed your way to the Lord and you go and you find your friends on the way to school and they are telling stories about things that you know are not right, they're not godly, they're not things that people should be doing, what would you do if you've committed your way to the Lord? Well, you know, when someone's saying something they shouldn't, you shouldn't say, you shouldn't do that. No, God says, you should say, I cannot do that. Excuse me. And you can either say, I cannot do that because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, or you can just say, you know, I've got to go over here. And you excuse yourself and you leave and you don't take part in the activities that you know are not pleasing to God. And I want to say, if you've committed your way to the Lord, you need to ask the Lord to give you the right friends, regardless of what age you are. Your friends that you run around with determines very much what you will become in life. And you need to say, Lord, give me friends that love and honor and obey you. Then you need to be a friend that loves and honors and obeys the Lord. And, you know, even say that you've committed your way to the Lord. There's a new person, maybe a church, maybe on the playground, but you have your own group of friends. If you've committed your way to the Lord, what are you going to do? You're going to say, please come here, play with me, be part of our group. You're going to include them. Now, you know, maybe you go out for sports. And if you go out for sports and you've committed your way to the Lord, are you going to always want to be first? If you do something that is really good, and you can do a good play. But who has given you that ability and that talent? It is God. So you have a choice. Are you going to say, oh, yes, I am just really good. Yes, yes, that was me. I, I, I did that. Or are you going to say, Lord, the Lord gave me that ability. You know, I, I'm just grateful I can be on the team. Are you going to be humble? Are you going to be prideful? You know, every decision you make really is a spiritual decision. From what you eat, when you go out to dinner, are you going to order something that is too expensive? Are you going to order something that is not healthful for you to eat? Every decision we make is a decision that we should make 
with God in mind. Now, you know, here's your parents. Do you know that I have heard kids say, I can hardly wait to get out from living in my parents' house so I can do exactly what I want. Do you know that you never have a time in your life you do exactly what you want? When you get a job, you're under your boss. You're under the government. When you go to church, you're under the, the priest and the pastors at church. So we're never a law unto ourselves, and we're always under God. So God says, commit your way. Learn to be obedient. If you learn to be obedient and under authority, then you will be the most creative. It's people that are always trying to resist those over them. They don't have any creativity left for anything else. So learn to be under the people that God has put in your life. And then, of course, every area, even the area of money. Do you know all things belong to God? If he gives you money, then you need to say, this is your money. How do you want me to spend it? And he wants us, of course, to save. He wants us to give part of our money to him. And then, of course, we spend money. And we also spend money on others, those we love. We, we're generous with the people that we love. That's what God wants us to do. So, you know, when you commit your way to the Lord, that means every decision you make all day long, you say, Lord, show me. And then you trust in him to lead and guide you, and he will do that. Oh, it is so wonderful that we can put our trust in the Lord. And that is what our verse says. Commit your way to the Lord, and then trust also in him. He's, he knows what he created and made you to be. He's going to bring it to pass so that your life will accomplish the great things that he has created for you to become. And that's found in the book of Psalms, verse chapter 37, verse 5. Now, the motions we have is commit your way. So, you know, we're going along. No, I, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't know which way to go, kind of like Eddie. Is this right? No, this is right. So it's commit your way, we don't know, to the Lord. This is an L, and so it's the Lord, it's a banner. So it's commit your way to the Lord, and then trust. Put your trust also in Him, the Lord, and He will bring it to pass. Now your way will be straight. And it doesn't mean that everything's going to work out like you think it should, but everything is going to work out like God knows that it should. Can you sing that and do the motions? Can you do that one more time? Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Psalm 37, verse 5. You did a great job. Just do it again. That was wonderful. Thank you. Now, we have been learning about Abraham. And remember, we learned that God keeps his promises because God said to Abraham, Abraham, leave this country where they worship idols and you go out to a place. I will show you. I'm not going to tell you where that is. And I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to give that land to you. I'm going to make you a blessing. And God always keeps his promises. Abraham obeyed. He went out. He did exactly what the Lord said. And remember then that God gave him a son? And oh, he loved that son. It was Isaac and it laughter. And then God asked Abraham to do something that was very, very hard. You know, the Bible tells us that 
Abraham loved his only son. And God says, I want you to take that son and I want you to offer him to me. Now you remember that God had a son too. And God loved his son. And God offered his son as a sacrifice for you and me. And we remember in the story that God provided a ram for Abraham. He didn't have to offer his son. But you remember that Isaac was spared. But God did not spare his own son. He delivered him up for us all. He died for our sin so we wouldn't have to die. And all oh, God gave his own precious son for you. Well, the Bible tells us that after Abraham had offered his son Isaac, that, oh, they went back home, and they had many wonderful days. And they had those many wonderful days, and there was Sarah also. Well, the Bible tells us that Sarah, at age 127, that she died. And so there was just Abraham and Isaac. Well, Isaac was 40 years old at this time. But what do you think that Isaac didn't have? He didn't have a wife. And they lived, though, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham, he thought, I don't want Isaac to marry a girl from the land of Canaan. They worship idols. They worship all these gods that do these things that are not right. They're evil. They really aren't even gods at all. And so the Bible tells us that Abraham, how was he going to find a wife for his son? Well, he did what we should do. He committed his way to the Lord, and he asked God for guidance. Okay, Lord, I need a wife for my son. What should I do? And so the Bible says that God gave him an idea. And so what he did was he called in his trusted servant. And he said to his servant, he says, I want you to make me a promise. He says, I want you to go to the country, not of Ur. He had come out of Ur. That's where they worshiped the moon god. But they had then gone to the land of Haran. He says, I want you to go back to Haran. And perhaps some of my relatives are still there. Now, Abraham's father worshiped the moon god. But some of his other relatives Worship the one true and living God. And he says, perhaps they have had a daughter, and you can find a wife for my son Isaac. And the servant says, well, I can go, but uh, perhaps the woman will not be willing to follow me to this land. This land is very far away. She's never been here. Must I take your son back to the land from which you came? And Abraham, he said to him, no, do not, do not take my son back there. And he says, you know, the Lord God of heaven who brought me here, he will send his angel before you. And if his angel cannot convince that young girl to come and marry my son, then there's nothing that you and I can say that's going to convince her to come and be a wife for Isaac. And if the Woman, if she's not willing, then you're free from the oath. Well, what do you think Isaac thought? Now, you know what? He knew that his dad had been talking to that servant. Would you want to pick out your own wife? Or would you want a servant that is quite old to go and pick out the wife for you? Well, you know what Isaac did? He committed his way to the Lord. And so he just said, Lord, I'm going to follow you. If this is what my father, remember we said that you have to learn to be under those over you. If this is what my father has 
decided to do, you've given him guidance, I just pray that you'll give that servant guidance too. So that servant, the Bible tells us that he got right up and he departed to the land. Now the Bible tells us that all of the goods of Abraham he had put into the hands of this servant. This was a trusted servant. Abraham could trust him with anything. You know, if you ever say, well, you don't trust me, it's because you haven't proven to be trustworthy. But he had, and it says that all the master's goods, he went and he took 10 camels. And these 10 camels, he loaded them with gold and silver jewelry. And he was going to go find what? a young woman. And so he also put on some beautiful clothes and some things that he knew that a young woman would really like. And of course, when they were traveling across the desert, they would put old skins on top so they wouldn't see all of the wealth that they had. Well, the Bible tells us that they started out. Oh, I, I don't have all 10 camels here, but it was a lot. And they went, and the Bible tells us that, you know, it probably took two to three weeks to go. So as this servant was traveling that two to three weeks, what do you think he was thinking about the entire way? What do you think he was praying? You know, I'm sure he was committing his way to the Lord, and he was trusting in God, and he was saying, Lord, give me guidance. I love Isaac. I love my master's son. I want to pick out just the right wife for him. And I'm sure as he thought, as he was going along, he thought, now what kind of a wife should I get? Well, you know, now I want to say that you know, it's one thing to be beautiful, but he wanted this to be the right person. And so the Bible tells us that when he got to the land of Haran to find the right person, do you think that he was going to go down where, where all the teenagers were hanging out and where they were just goofing off and he said, no, 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 that's not the kind of person I want. I want someone who is loyal and, and someone who is generous and someone who's willing to give up their time and someone who is, is willing to be kind to someone they don't even know. I want someone who is alert to the needs of others. And so he says, you know, I'm going to have to go to the right place to find that person. So he thought, let's see, where should I go? Well, down by the well, that is where all the young girls would come and they would draw water for their families. That was one of their jobs. And so the Bible says that when he got to the town, that that's where he went. With his camels, he went down there. And he thought, now, but there's going to be a lot of girls. How am I going to know which one? So he said, he just prayed to the Lord, and he says, Lord, I want to know the right thing to say. You know, kids, you can ask God for every single step you take during the day. That's what he wants us to do. And so he just prayed. He says, oh, Lord God of Abraham, give me success. I know it's going to come from you. And he says, there, there's, the, there's the daughters of the men of the city. They're coming out to draw water. He says, um, now let's see. I want someone who's, who's going to be willing to work and kind of stranger. So he says, yes, please, I will go up and the one that I say, please let down your pitcher that I may have a drink. And then she says to me, yes, of course, here, have a drink. And I will also water your camels. Well, camels, if they're thirsty, they have been known in 10 minutes to drink 30 gallons of water. You know the 30-gallon trash cans are about this high and this big around? That, 
that would be 10 of them. There were 10 camels. Even if they only drank 20 gallons, that's 200 gallons of water. Do you? He, he was an old man. Do you, do you think that one of these girls was going to say to someone that they didn't even know that they would never see again, here, let me do all of this work for you? Well, he just said, oh, Lord, please, if, just he prayed the right thing to say. Please, the, the one that I say that to, let her say that. And before he even finished speaking, the Bible says he looked up and there was a young woman and she was coming. And, and he looked and she was very beautiful. And he could tell that she wasn't married either. Oh, she was so gorgeous. And of course he wanted to find a beautiful young woman for Isaac. But more important than that, he wanted her to be kind and generous and loving. And so he ran up to her. And after she had gotten the water, the Bible tells us that he said to her, he said, please, could you give me a drink? And she says, oh, drink, my Lord. And so she quickly filled her pitcher and she gave him a drink. And oh, he drank that water and it was cool and refreshing and wonderful. But what were the words that he was waiting to hear? <gasps> was she going to say that? Now, you know, this woman, perhaps when she got up that morning, she thought, you know, nothing ever happens around here. But maybe she committed her life to the Lord. Maybe she just said, Lord, I'm just going to commit my day to you. Guide me. Show me what you want me to do to serve you. You know, because when you get up in the morning, God wants you to love, serve, and obey him. And we can serve God by serving others. And maybe she had asked God that very morning for guidance. Maybe she had committed her way to the Lord. So the Bible says that after she had given that servant a drink, then she quickly said to him, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Oh, he was so excited. But he didn't say anything because, you know, sometimes people will say, oh, yes, I'll do that. And then they don't. This was going to be a big job. Ten camels drinking a lot. Was she going to be willing to do that? And the Bible tells us that she quickly emptied her pitcher into the trough there for the camels. Then she ran back and got more water. And then she emptied it. And she drew and the camels drank. And she drew and the camels drank. And she continued until the camels were completely finished drinking. Oh, the servant, though, he didn't say anything. I'm sure he just stood there in awe and amazement. And he was saying, oh, Lord. And so the Bible says that as soon as she had given water to all of the camels and then he got up and he went over to one of the packs and he lifted it up and he drew out oh these beautiful bracelets made of real silver and he took them and he put them on her wrist and then he took out a ring that was solid gold and he gave her that ring and she could tell from the weight of the bracelets and the weight of the ring this was a wealthy man and the Bible says that then he said to her uh, who's uh, whose daughter are you tell me please is there room in your father's house for us to lodge my ten camels to feed them and and the servants and she says well I am Rebecca I my grandfather was Nahor and the servant said Nahor I'm the servant of Abraham Abraham and Nahor were brothers 
and I'm sure Rebecca, she must have said, Abraham, <gasps> we haven't heard anything about Abraham since Many years ago, he said, God called me to go out to a place. No, I don't even know where it is, but I'm going to follow God. Why, that's the last we heard of him. That was many, many years ago. And oh, they were both so excited. God had led him. And you know that this man, right there in the public place where everyone was, at the well where the young women were and the men were, the Bible says that he bowed his head and he worshiped the Lord. And he says, oh, blessed be the Lord God of my master. You have not forsaken me. You have brought me all this way, Lord. And you led me right to the house of my master's brethren. And so the young woman, she ran home and she ran and found her brother Laban. And oh, when Laban saw the gold ring and the bracelets, he went out to this servant and he says, oh yes, please come. We have room for you. Yes, please come. Come with us. Stay at our house. And so they all went to Rebecca's house. And so the Bible says that they came to Rebecca's home and there they gave them food for the camel and they washed their feet and oh, then they set before them food to eat. But the servant says, I will not eat until I have told you why I have come. You know, kids, he had come three to four weeks been on the road but he said no i want to tell you why i'm here he says i am abraham's servant and he says oh the lord has blessed my master greatly he's given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and servants and camels and donkeys you know, this was not the time to be humble about what Abraham said, had, because he wanted to take that young girl back, and he wanted them to know that she would be well provided for. And of course, there was Rebecca, and she was listening to all of this. And then he goes on to say, and my master's wife, Sarah, gave him a son in his old age. And He's going to give that son all that he has. And my master says, no, no, don't you take a wife from those Canaanite women that don't follow God. No, you go back to the land of my fathers, to my family, and you take there a wife for my son, one that believes in God, one that has character. And I'm sure as Rebecca was listening to this, she thought, oh, oh this is so wonderful. And he says, you know, the Lord said he would send an angel and prosper my way. And when I came, I prayed. I said, Lord, the one that I asked for a drink, have her be willing to water the camels. And I'm sure Rebecca thought, I did that. Yes, yes, I did. I did. I said that. Oh, I am sure she was so thankful that she had been so willing to serve this old man that she didn't even know. You know what, kids? You never know when God is going to use something that you do. In fact, you can know that every time you do something for someone, God keeps track of it. And that's what he wants you to do. Love, serve, and obey others. And so the man says, and this, I believe Rebecca, I believe she's to be the one that is going to be the wife of my master's son. And you know, when she got done, they all said, well, I think, I think this is what we should do. And so they said, yes, yes, she can go if she will. And they said to Rebecca, will you go? And she says, I will go. Well, after he had told his business, then the Bible says that they all sat down to eat and they ate and oh it was wonderful and the servant yes at this time he says oh yes I will eat with everyone else now well 
the next morning. They got up, and Rebecca's family said, could you give her just 10 days to stay with us? And then you may take her? And he says, 10 days? No, no, my master is going to be expecting me. He gave me a job to do. Now, you know, kids, this servant, he had followed Abraham, we feel, when he left Ur of the Chaldees. He had lived in tents the entire time. Here he was in a city with all the sights to see and the food to eat and the things to do. He wasn't interested in that. He says, my master has given me a job. I am here to obey my master. Oh, kids, I hope you don't get sidetracked. I hope you always remember that the Lord is your master and you always follow him. And so he says, no, we must go back today. And so they said, well, well, let us ask Rebecca what she wants to do. And so they brought her. Now, kids, when Rebecca left, she never returned. This was a big step for her. She was leaving home. She would be leaving home forever. And so they said to her, will you go with this man? And will you go today? And you know, kids, I hope when God calls you to follow him, that you give the very same answer that Rebecca gave. And God is calling you. God's calling you to follow him, to commit your way to him, to ask him for guidance, to every day do that which he would have you to do. And you know, the Bible says that she said to them all, she says, I will. I will go and I will will go today. And so, you know, kids, now, um, I didn't tell you, but after they had eaten and they had said, yes, she, she will be the wife of your master's son, he went to his camels and he brought out, oh, so much more gold and so much more silver and so much more jewelry. And then he knew what she would need to be the wife of the master's son. So he brought out these beautiful clothes and gave her all these beautiful clothes. She didn't have to go shopping for anything. She had all she needed to be the wife of this rich man's son, Isaac. And then, of course, the servant gave many gifts to her brother, many gifts to her mother, many gifts to her family. Well, that day, the Bible tells us that they started out and they went back. Now, you know one thing that her family gave her that was invaluable to her as a gift? They gave her her nurse. And it also says that her maids arose and they rode on the camels and they went too. So yes, she was going to this distant land, but she was going with people that she knew. And oh, it was a very exciting time in her life. Oh, I am so sure that she was so thankful that she says, yes, Lord, I will go. And I'm sure she asked for guidance and her parents asked for guidance. Should we send her? And they said, yes, we should. So they got up and that day they left to go back to Canaan. So as they traveled that two and a half weeks back to the land of Canaan, every night that they would stop, what do you think that Rebecca would ask the servant? I'm sure she says, could you tell me about Isaac? Could you tell me what it's, he's like? And oh, the servant, I'm sure he says, oh, yes, I was there when he was born. And oh, he was a wonderful little baby. And, and he grew up, though, and he learned to obey. And he learned to obey the Lord. And he learned to obey his parents. And, and he's honest, and he's kind, and he's gentle. And, and she would just say, oh, tell me more, tell me more, tell me all the stories that you remember. And as they traveled back, he told her all the stories about Isaac. They feel that Rebecca fell in love with Isaac on the way back 
from the stories that the servant told her. Do you know that there's another king who has an only son, and he is calling out a bride for this son? And there is a servant that he has sent down here to reveal to people all the wonderful things about his son, and that is God. He's looking for a bride for Christ. And if you've asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be your savior, you are that bride. And as we learn the stories that God has told us in his word, we should fall in love with him before we even see him. Well, they traveled for two to three weeks. And one day the Bible tells us that Rebecca lifted up her eyes and there she saw out in the field a young man. <gasps> and the servant said, that's him. That's Abraham's son. That is your new husband. That is Isaac. And oh, the Bible says that she got down off of her camel. And when she got down off of her camel, she took a veil and she covered her face. And the Bible says that when she saw Isaac, oh, Isaac couldn't even see because of the veil how beautiful she was. But the Bible says that she became his wife and he loved her. Her. And oh, I know that she loved him too. You know why this all happened? It all happened because the people in our story committed their way to the Lord and trusted in God and asked God for guidance. Abraham did. He said, I need a, 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 a wife for my son. And Isaac said, yes, I will let the servant go. I will be under you, Dad. You said you don't want me going back there. I won't do that. And the servant just prayed and says, oh, please, Lord, lead me to the right one. And Rebecca that day, you know, for no reason at all, she says, I'm going to be helpful. I'm going to serve. I'm going to do that which God has put before me to do that day. And it was water these camels. And then, of course, her family also asked for guidance. Should she go to this distant country? And they said, yes. You know what, kids? You want to ask God for guidance every day. He's going to lead you. You know what? If you're going to be the right person, you're going to have to let him work in your heart and change you. If you're going to be in the right place, you're going to have to follow him. You're going to have to learn to say the right things. If someone's looking for someone that they want, and, and they want praying for a godly person, but you want that godly person, they're not going to want you. You can't say, oh, when the time comes in, I'll do the right thing. No, you won't be the right person at that point. You won't be in the right place. You won't be saying the right things, and everybody will know that you're not. And then when you are the right person in the right place, God will use you. And you know that I hope that when God calls you, that you will say exactly what Rebecca said when he says, I have a job for you to do. I want you to follow me. Will you say what she did? Will you say, I will. Lord, I'm ready. I will do. I will go. I will be what you want me to do and to go and to be. I hope that you do that. Oh, I just pray that you will. Now, many of the stories in the Bible show us about God himself and what he is doing. And this is a perfect example. Yes, we see the story is about Abraham, who wanted a bride for his son Isaac. And so he sent his servant to a faraway country to get that bride. But you know, this is really about someone else. It's about God. Abraham is like God the Father. God the Father is seeking a bride for his only son too. And of course, his only son is the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Yes. And so what he has done is he has sent out into the world his Holy Spirit. And his Holy Spirit is working in the hearts and lives of you and me and others. He's preparing a bride. And of course, if I had Rebecca up here, she would be like us, the bride that God is calling. But God gave her a choice. Would she or would she not be the bride of this man that she had never seen? God has given you a choice. Will you or will you not be the bride of his son? And of course, the Holy Spirit works in our hearts. He wants to purify us and make us godly and, and make us righteous so we will be a worthy bride. Do you think it's right for a bridegroom to be selfless and loving and giving and have a bride who is selfish and not generous and not kind? No, that's not the kind of bride. And the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is working in your heart. You know, as a still, small voice, the Holy Spirit tells us this is the way. Walk in it. But you have the choice. You have the choice to say, I will follow the leading. Or I know I want things my own way. Oh, be very careful every day, all day long. Listen for God's voice. Say yes to him. Follow him. Be a bride that's worthy of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what this story is really like to show us that God, is choosing out a bride. Oh, I hope you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and become part of that bride and then let him work in your heart and life to perfect you and make you fit and holy for the wonderful bridegroom that you will see someday. Oh, this was a beautiful story. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I hope you have a wonderful week. I will see you next time. Bye.